Hello lovely butterfly, welcome to this journal on Monday, week 181. It's a special one. Welcome, welcome sweet butterfly, it's France. Like I said, today is a special one because I'm going to be making a cover for my new very big art journal. Well, for me, very big. It's an A4 when it's closed, A3 when it's laying open on my table. And for me, that's big. I don't have any fabric that's large enough to cover all of that. So I'm going to make a cover out of a manila folder that I'm going to be wrapping with canvas. So I already took one sheet of canvas. Now I'm folding the manila folder around my journal. And that is when I realized that my sheet of canvas is just too short so I need a second one and this pop art canvas has already been prepped with gesso so I don't need to bother with that I do however need to resize my folder because it's slightly too large and then round the corners again as my journal has rounded corners I want my cover to have rounded corners as well so that everything lo looks like it belongs together I need to cut my uh, canvas as well as I won't be able to use it in one piece. So I will have two um, pieces, one for the front, one for the back, and then one for the spine. And that will be this smaller portion one. The first thing I'm going to do is prep this inside um, folder and I'm just going to cover it with two layers of gesso. While that first layer is drying, I can already start applying some paint on my covers. So I'm just going in with the fresco finish, um, two complementary colors, of course the London Night because it's the all-time favorite, and then some um, French roast to have this brown undertone. The French roast, however, is not opaque. So, well, it's just a base coat, so that's okay. And then for the spine piece, I'm just scraping off whatever I have left over on my silicone brush. I didn't put paint everywhere because I have my reasons. <laughs> I am, however, going in with uh, the crackle glaze where I have the paint. And again, just scraping it on with my silicone brush, making sure that I have a thin layer all over that first layer of paint. The best part of this crackle glaze is that you can heat set it. This was a big surface, so it took a while to dry. Going in with two lighter colors for uh, the top layer, and I'm using mushroom and koala, and just applying it with a brayer on the spine piece, because I don't have any crackle glaze here. I don't want to do the same thing all over. I do, however, want to have something interesting going on. So a brayer it is. I'm using the same colors for the covers um, where I want to have my crackle effect and as it is a big surface I'm using a big sponge so that I'm sure that I have the best crackles ever without having to go back and forth. 
And if you want to know how to get the best crackles, I have a very interesting video about that. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Everything is dried, everything is crackled as I wanted it to have it. So on the parts where I don't have any crackling going on, I'm going back in with my honeycomb stencil, a smaller sponge and just some gesso to add some white accents. Those will stand out um, compared to the darker elements that I want to add. My favorite part of the um, Paper Artsy cracking system is this, is that I can go in with a sanding block. Now this is a very gentle one um, and I can distress this like no other. I mean, from all the crackle systems that I've worked with, this is the only one that can actually do this to this extent so easily. Yes, I know, I'm bragging about it, but that's because it makes me happy and I hope it makes you happy too. Um, the fact that I'm working on a non-sturdy surface like this canvas makes it even easier to distress it. I mean, I could peel off all the crackles if I wanted to, which I don't, of course. I mean, that would be taking it one step too far. Um, but this is like a glorious thing to do. Now, the sanding blocks that I use are very gentle, so they don't actually scrape or scratch the surface. They just make it possible to peel off some of the paint. Before moving on, I need to make sure that whatever it is I have on my canvas now stays on the canvas. Like I said, it's a non-sturdy surface, so I need to help it a little bit to stick down. I'm using clear gesso to do so, also because I want to go in with spray inks, so they will need a bit of um, adherence. And gesso, clear gesso will do just that, while leaving whatever is underneath it still visible.
as I do use a lot of circles in my art channeling, of course I need some circles on the cover of my channel, but I want to use spray inks and I don't want to spray everywhere, so I'm covering up whatever I don't need to be inked up. I picked out a couple of my favorite Lindy Stem Gang spray inks and for this part I'm using a Time Travel Teal, Red Hot Poker Orange and Whale Watch Blue. For the piece of the spine, however, I'm first spraying some water on and then I'm using the Midnight Rendezvous Raven and Dark Chocolate Truffle, which is very hard to read when you don't have your glasses on. Playing around with the water and then playing around with the ink to go over the other pieces of the cover so that I have a bit of that color over there too, yet not too much. And spraying with these inks over the crackle that is already um, on the cover makes that crackle stand out like it's amazing. If you haven't tried this yet, you should. As I wasn't sure as to which pen I wanted to use to make my circle stand out, I took the time to test and um, have a little go on a piece of scrap paper and then decided to go for the Unipin pen, so the very fine uh, line. I do want my circles to look like circles, but I don't want it yet to be too intense. At this point, I still haven't decided which cover will be the front, which cover will be the back, so I don't know what's up and what's down, and that's okay. I'm just um, using whatever it is I have in front of me so far. At this point, I actually started to realize that what I was doing was art channeling on a larger scale. I've never done this big an art channeling piece, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do. So I just kept going and building up just like I would for an art channeling spread. And I'm actually using the exact same elements. The circles, the stamping in the circles with my number stamp um, is the exact same thing as I would do for uh, an art channeling spread. And as I was stamping, I realized that it was time to make up my mind as to what would be the front and what would be the back, because I also wanted to stamp with a text stamp, and obviously I don't want that to end up upside down. So well, for the spine, I don't have any choice, um, but at this point I decided that what was on the left would be the back cover and what was on the right would be the front cover. And it only had to do with the spray ink and the way the spray ink looked on the canvas. That's what made me decide. And just like for an art spread, I would like my circles to look a little bit more organic and not that 
stiff and rigid, so I'm just adding some doodling. And while doing that, I wanted to continue doodling, so that's exactly what I did. I continued to doodle around the honeycomb structure. Of course I needed splatters, black and white splatters, so I'm just using the Posca pen. This is so easy to make uh, splatters. You don't need to take out a paintbrush, you don't need to rinse your paintbrush, you just need your pen, you activate your pen, you flick it and you have splatters. And as it is acrylic paint, well, they really stand out. The white and black splatters are fun, but I also wanted some color splatters, so I took back that yummy red hot poker orange Lindy's Gang spray ink and flicked it on the covers, but I didn't dry it completely. I dried it halfway through and then lifted the color again, so that only left that shimmering on the cover and it lifted a bit of the color that was underneath and that looked yummy. So of course I had to repeat that several times. Time to start assembling everything. So somewhere in between I did add a second layer of gesso on this um, cover, but at this point I have to admit that I started a fight with my camera because it decided that the white of the manila folder was too, well it's not even white, it's yellow, but it decided that it was too much and it decided to start flickering. So I tried all the settings that I had to stop that, but for some reason it decided that flickering was the way to go. And then my double-sided tape was empty and then I needed to set <laughs> another double-sided tape. So mm, this was not going as easily as I wanted to have it go, but nonetheless, moving on. So I covered everything that I needed with double-sided tape. And this is where I realized that this opening in the front cover would be an issue because my cover would not be, well, my um, canvas would not be happy with that. So I reused the part that I trimmed from the backside of the folder to fill up that gap. I just glued it down with the double-sided tape and then covered it with a gesso as well. And like I said, I had a fight with the camera. So at some point I thought it was running while it wasn't. And that is when I glued down uh, the part for the spine and the left side of the cover. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with the right side as I did for the left side. First, um, I'm just keeping the down bottom in account to have it straight and to stick it down on the double sided tape. Then folding the folder to check if it's more or less straight, as straight as it can go. And then folding over um, a bit more than a centimeter on the inside. And frankly, if I had canvas, if my canvas would have been bigger, I would have folded some up at the top and the bottom as well, but it wasn't big enough. So I had to do it just this way. And the feel that it gives is really, really nice, but it's too short, so I need to trim the top of my manila folder. And I'm just doing it using scissors. 
um, I really need to trim it because I also have the double-sided tape which is making that side sticky and well we don't on top of being ugly it's sticky so it definitely needs to go For me personally, I like my covers to have stitching on it. Whether it's functional or not, I don't care. <laughs> I just like to add some stitching. If you're planning on doing this and you love your sewing machine, please know that it will suffer because of the double-sided tape, which is in between uh, the canvas and the folder. Um, I use my machine only in my studio, so I'm not using it for serious stuff. <laughs> Um, if I can put it that way. I'm only using it for the messy stuff, so I don't care if it gets sticky or whatever. But if you like and love your sewing machine, please keep that in mind. At this point, I did not add any sewing at uh, the spine part of the cover because I, wanted, I want that part to remain as flexible as possible. My journal might still grow and I might need to fold the cover um, a bit larger and well I want to maintain as much flexibility as I can for now. I might add sewing later on when my channel is finished though. I'm just pulling the threads together and then tying them together with a little knot to make sure that the sewing stays in place and that will also leave me with some thread sticking out which I like. And of course the best moment is when you can put your journal in there. As you can see the cover is slightly bigger, well larger than my journal, so my journal can still grow in it. I wanted to distress the edge of the canvas, uh, but I didn't have any pliers here, so I will have to come back to that later on when I have the necessary tools. I tried with my tweezers, which of course did not work, so I could only pull out this one little thread. <laughs> um, I'll. I'll come back to that later on. I still have time to do so. I still wanted to do something with those circles. I thought they deserved a little bit more attention being the front of the cover. Um, so I wanted to add, well, you, you know me by now. You know that I like some ombre in my circles. So I used, again, my Posca pens, which are just acrylic, and then some water to blend and pull the white from the pen into um, the Lindy's Gang sprays that I have on there, which of course get reactivated by the water that I'm adding. And because this is so much fun for me to do, I'm doing the same thing with a black pen at the bottom of the circle to really make it um, like a light and a shade on both sides of the circle. Thank you. 
I also thought that my cover could do with some more of that blue, but I didn't want to take any risk with the spray inks. So instead I'm using Fresco Finish and I'm combining two uh, shades to have more or less the blue that works with the spray ink that I have on there. And then just using a sponge and my Driving Me Circle stencil, I'm dabbing it on, on the cover. To make this new element work with what I already have going on, I'm adding some more doodling and well, it's also just because it's fun to do so. As the whole process felt like actual art channeling, I thought I needed to add some wording to it. So I took the August A Layer A Day sticker sheet because that has a sticker that says note to self, which I thought, well, that has to go on this cover. I mean, it's a journal, so it needs the sticker, right? Uh, but that sticker also needed some colors. So I took again that um, scrumptious blue Lindy Stem Gang spray ink, which is the time travel teal added some water to it and then just use it to colorize the sticker. As these are mixed media stickers, they can take whatever you throw at them as long as you leave them in place while the glue is drying. And then I also added some more of that wide um, at the top of the sticker, well, on the canvas, not on the sticker uh, in itself, just to make it work with the background. The last thing I needed to add was something to keep my journal and my cover together. I don't want to attach the cover to the journal yet because I want to be able to work in my journal without having the cover around it. And I also don't want the closure to be um, the final one for now. I also want it to be something that can grow with my journal and I will replace it with a more final one in the end. So I just opted for a an elastic band that would go around from the back with two eyelets. Simple but practical. I'm just using my big bite to place um, the eyelets and those have of course been home rusted so that is why they look like that bizarre metal color instead of just looking like metal. No, I just couldn't stop doodling. <laughs> That's actually it for today. Now, I would like to know if you would like for me to make a kit for you to make the same kind of channel, including everything, the paints, the sprays, uh, the canvas, um, the whole thing. Let me know in comment if you would like me to make this kind of kit. Anyway, I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will see you back here next Thursday for a new fluttering. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Big shout out to my patrons who made this video possible. See you back here next time. Butterfly kisses.